Hey folks, Alan Mandic, aka Mandic Really here. I run a Vega 56 in my video editing workstation, and I am an online content creator. So the question has arisen in my mind with all the excellent hardware that's hitting the market right now, will I see a big performance improvement from something like, oh, let's say an RTX 3080? Well, I got my hands on one. So let's find out. beating myself up for close to two weeks now that I've had this card. What am I gonna do with it? Am I gonna put it in my video editing workstation and make that thing run faster than the Vega 56 that's in there right now? Or am I gonna part with it? Cause technically I'm unemployed right now. So I should not have spent this money. I'm sure a lot of you are probably sitting out there thinking to yourselves, that's silly, just put it in your system. Why wouldn't you have done that? The thing is my system is water cooled. As such, there's no water blocks for this card. I wasn't able to research it when I was on the spot going to buy this card. Cause it was one of those, we only have like five of these in stock buy it now or I guarantee you they will be sold out in the next half hour. I didn't know what to do at the time. I was trying to research, trying to find water blocks. Nobody had them. And turns out this is a custom PCB. It's not a reference PCB, meaning that water blocks are gonna be even further delayed for this specific card. Let me go ahead and use my psychic powers and come up with your next thought on this whole thing. Ah yes, just put it in there with the air cooler and wait for a water block. Here's the thing. I have to reconfigure my water cooling system. Of course, I have to eliminate the GPU. That's not that big of a deal. The bigger deal is that this card is so long that from the back of the case to where my reservoir is mounted, this would hit my reservoir, meaning I need to remount my reservoir, which mounting it where it is now was kind of a pain in the butt the first time around. So what am I gonna do? Well, I came up with a solution. A lot of people on TikTok were going back and forth, giving me crap about the idea, but I wasn't running this thing yet, so we're gonna do it. Let's get the thing installed in the system. I'll show you how I worked around getting this thing to fit in there, and then we'll run some benchmarks versus the Vega 56 that I've got in there now to see how much of a leap in performance this thing should be. Let's get to it. So clearly the first steps to go ahead and get this thing installed into the system is to remove the old stuff. So I had to start by draining out the cooling system, get all that old coolant out of there. Actually, it wasn't that old. It's only been in there for like a month, but hey, new coolant anyway. Once I got the Vega 56 out of the way, something dawned on me. My Elgato capture card, I can't say that word well. Elgato, Elgato, Elgato. Once I got that thing out, I realized that the capture card was rather close and I'm concerned that that's gonna cause a choking of the airflow to the 3080, only time will tell. Next, I fired up my Ender 3 3D printer to make a new bracket for the reservoir. I jumped into Fusion 360 and I designed my own multi-piece brackets. These brackets are designed to mount on three sides of the pump and reservoir combination and then mount to the 120 millimeter fan bolt pattern on my 360 radiator at the bottom. This should not only move the reservoir where I need it to be, but it'd be a much sturdier mounting design. I made them in three pieces so that they could print more easily, not have to worry about a failed print halfway through on these long uprights. And also allowed me to make the design of the sidearm brackets a little more visually pleasing since they're gonna be visible in the case. I'm personally pretty darn happy with this bracket setup. I didn't actually measure to see if the 3080 was gonna fit, so let's put it in. I got the 3080 slotted into there and I'm pretty happy with it. Once I got it screwed in there, it really doesn't have that much sag and it is a pretty beefy card, so that's saying something. I really should get some nicer cables for this case set up and some independent eight pin cables, not the kind of spliced together one, this being a pretty power hungry card that might come into play in this situation. And you can see that this thing just fit in here. Like I said, when I designed the brackets for the reservoir, I basically moved them as far forward as I felt was comfortable to do so. And I'm glad I moved as much as I did. I could have stand to go a little further probably. Now, since I don't have the graphics card water block in there anymore, it's time to loop through to the CPU and get that onto its dual 360 radiator loop now. So it should perform a little bit better on its own. And for anybody who wants to say that I should hardline this build and uh, what the heck's with the big loops of hope in there, it looks ugly. This is the workstation and this week, this very week, the 5900X is launching and I am planning to pick one up. I don't wanna to have to drain this fluid again just to change out the CPU in it. I can pop that water block off of there, change the CPU, put it back on without having to drain the system at all with this setup. Now that the loop is back together, it's time to fill the system and run some benchmarks.
Okay, I've been running this 3080 in my system for a few days now, and I wanted to talk about what it is that I've experienced with it and what I really think of it. Is it worth it in my case? I don't mean in my PC case, I mean like legitimately in my use case. Mm. Let's talk benchmark numbers, then I'll talk about like real world performance, how I'm feeling about it. I ran a handful of tests on the Vega 56 before I pulled it out of there, and then I ran the same test on the 3080, though I did run one or two tests more on the 3080 that I forgot to run on the Vega 56 before I started. Let's start with Time Spy. This is standard 3D Mark Time Spy, not extreme, not a paid version. It's the free version that you could download. On Time Spy, the Vega 56 ran at 6,611 points. This is the point where you're gonna get most impressed by the 3080, I think, because the 3080 pulled in 15,731. It more than doubled the number of my Vega 56. Now, I didn't expect that the Vega 56 was gonna compete with the 3080, but wow. Now, as I said, this is probably the point where the, the comparison's gonna get a little fuzzier for folks, because now we're gonna move away from any gaming performance into content creation kind of testing. I use the Puget benchmarks for this for most of the Adobe Creative Cloud. Side note, Puget is free for personal use. I am not a commercial monetized channel here, so I do personally consider this personal use, and you could download this for your own needs as well. The commercial license for it is $2,000, so, uh, uh, yeah. Okay, now actually getting into the Creative Cloud numbers. Adobe Premiere, the thing that I edit with, the thing that I use the most out of the Creative Cloud, I scored 498 points with the Vega 56 in this system. With the 3080 in the system, I scored 662 points, and that is a decent uptick from the 498, but it's not nearly the domination that Time Spy was. You can see where Adobe just still doesn't leverage video cards nearly as much as they even claim they do. The recent 2020 update, they said that they 14.5, that's what I'm on now, they said they upped the GPU utilization so much, they are really not using GPUs to their full potential. It feels like they're leaving something on the table there. After Effects is one place that I was really hoping to see an improvement in this setup because I like using After Effects. The only reason that I don't use it more is just the time involved with doing it. I end up because both my experience with it and the hardware that I'm working with, it takes so long to track footage and render things out and layer things up, it starts to hurt my performance. It just gets time intensive and I don't get the chance to use it as much as I would like to. I was really hoping the 3080 would improve things there. Let's go to the Puget numbers to see how that plays out. So the Vega 56 turned in a score of 806 in the After Effects benchmark, and the 3080 came in at a whopping 860. Not even a 10% improvement over the Vega 56. So yet again, we can see that Adobe is just leaving a lot of performance on the table when it comes to even these GPUs now. Now I use Photoshop on a regular basis. I use it all the darn time. So I was kind of hoping for an uplift there as well. But running the benchmark on this system, here's a fun one for you. The Vega 56 returned 767 points. The 3080, 755. My GPU score actually went down in Photoshop. Don't know why that is. Now I'm gonna splash my SpecView Perf numbers up here on the screen for you so you can compare them to your system if you want to. I didn't run this on the Vega 56, I forgot about it. I do use, as I mentioned earlier, Fusion 360. I'm doing more CAD stuff lately. So I was intrigued by the idea. I just forgot to run it on the Vega 56 before I pulled it out. So now let's go ahead and talk real world performance of this 3080 in my work situation. As I said, I'm primarily a video editor doing YouTube videos for my Hot Rod Hippie YouTube channel and this channel. So working on Adobe Premiere, I was hoping for an uplift in performance. I've been having, ever since a few updates back, 14.3 or something like that, I've been having a real serious problem editing basically any footage. I get this stuttery drop frames issue on everything playing. I'm dropping a lot of frames where I didn't used to drop frames probably gonna drive me away from Premiere, to be honest. I'm getting so sick of these stupid bugs that they frick You're probably sick and tired of people complaining about Adobe on YouTube, so just let's move on from that. Basically, what I'm trying to say is the 3080 versus the Vega 56 performance on Adobe Premiere didn't change for me, except 
on export. I took my Hot Rod Hippie video from this week and I exported it and I timed it on the Vega 56 when I was done with that project. Now that project is a 14 minute long video with a mixture of H.264 and ProRes footage, both coming out of my GH5. The output on the Vega 56 took 22 minutes to do. Then I switched over to the 3080 and I worked with that to go ahead and export that same project. I went down to 12 minutes and 54 seconds. That is almost half the time. And honestly, that was pretty darn impressive in my book. That shaved 10 minutes off of my work just from that one 14 minute export. So my longer videos, I would expect even better gap of performance. All right, I've been editing this very video. That's why the wardrobe change here. So let's finalize a couple of points here. My CPU temperature has dropped from 71C to 61C while running time spot. I was pretty impressed by that 10C drop. Now that's still pretty warm for a custom loop system, especially with two 360 radiators on one CPU but this ASUS motherboard just pushes far, far too much voltage into that chip for a stock non-overclock chip that's silly. And I don't like that they do that. I need to undervolt this chip. Now, if a GPU is only hitting 66C while running Time Spy, that's perfectly acceptable by me. The Elgato card isn't blocking anything up as far as I can tell, so I'm happy with all of that. One thing I haven't seen many reviewers mention, everybody's talking about this blow through card design, and it's neat. It's a gimmick, if nothing else, and some have said they've seen temperature decreases, but I'm not attributing any of my improved temperatures to that because in my case, in my situation, unless I was running an EATX motherboard, because of the size of my graphics card, that blow through vent is just blowing on my 24 pin connector. It's not doing anything for me in my situation. All right, now it's time for the $800 question. The thing this whole video has been about for my needs as a content creator, is the 3080 worth it? No. I really don't think it is. If we want to talk about gaming performance, it's a no brainer. This thing blows my old card out of the water. If I get into streaming, which I would like to start doing more of, then yeah, this is going to be great to keep in there. That end of ink encoder is going to be excellent for OBS to take advantage of while I'm gaming because I don't have a separate gaming streaming PC setup. The biggest thing that people are probably saying, well, you lost 10 minutes on your export time and that is great. But how many videos do I export in a day? Mostly when I'm done a project, I hit export and I go take a shower. I go eat something and watch a YouTube video while this thing does its work. I take a break. So that 10 minutes, is that really paying off for me? With that $800, I could have bought a 3900 XT and upgraded the 64 gigs of RAM in this system. And I feel like it probably would have seen a better improvement in overall performance from those two things than I would from this graphics card. Like I said, I'm having trouble with ProRes footage in H.264. And despite this thing being an excellent card that should be able to decode that stuff, I'm not seeing an improvement there. And I'm sure that's down to Adobe Premiere not taking advantage of this card like it should be, but that's just the truth of the matter. It's not taking advantage of this card like it should be. I'm not seeing the big improvement. I need more horsepower behind this thing to push through that footage. That's what it comes down to is for me, for this setup, I don't know that this upgrade was worth it. Maybe when I combine it with the 5900X in the very near future, hopefully I can order one this week, I'll see a big improvement. It's just gonna open the doors for me. But will that be down to the CPU or the GPU? I can't really say if I'm gonna run them together. And I'm not 100% that I'm going to. Time will tell. All right, folks, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I hope you found it interesting. If you did, please go ahead and drop it a like. Let me know in the comments down below, what do you think of this video? Is it worth it to you to have a 3080 in your system? Are you yelling at the screen because I have one and you don't? Let me know in the comments down below. Get subscribed to keep up to date with all the content here on the Mandic Really channel, including hopefully some updates on the 5900X in the very, very near future. Thanks for coming around.